From the brains behind Brains On, it's Smash Boom Best. The show for people with big opinions. Hello, I'm Molly Bloom, and this is Smash Boom Best, the show where we take two things, smash them together, and ask you to decide which one is best. Today, totally lit libraries take on the marvel of museums in a heated, high-minded debate about which institution is the most educational, the most inspiring, the most impressive, and the coolest. So, which one will it be? Libraries or museums? Libraries, because I love to read. Museums. They tell you about the history. They tell you about dinosaurs. Actually, I think a museum is cooler, but I prefer a library. Libraries are like really quiet. You can't really do, really do much in a library. Museums are good for learning history, but you have to go there and pay. Museums. You can learn all about stuff and skeletons. Who will take the title Smash Boom Best? Brainy bookish team library or interactive outgoing team museum? Our judge today is Ben. Hi, Ben. Hey, Molly. So do you already have an opinion about which one is cooler, libraries or museums? I like libraries better because um, it's quiet. And you don't have to, like, walk around and look at art, or and you don't have to worry about seeing any inappropriate statues <laughs> or statues without a head yes. <laughs> or legs or arms. You kind of know more what you're going to get at yes. the library. So even though you have maybe more kindly feelings toward libraries right now, do you feel like you can put that aside and be an impartial judge for this debate? Yeah. Excellent. And how do you feel about debates in general? Do you ever get into debates with your friends or family? Well, sometimes about dinner, but not really <laughs> too much. So like, oh, in what in what regards to dinner? Uh, where we want to eat. <laughs> Are there tactics you use to try to persuade your family about where to go? For my aunt, I just lean up against her and then I look, <laughs> and then I look her in the eyes and try to look pathetic. <laughs> <laughs> so you try to use sympathy mm-hmm. to get them to go your way. I like it. The puppy dog eyes. Can you make your saddest whimper sound? Mm. Yeah, I would go wherever you want for dinner if you make that sound. Now, without further ado, it's time to introduce our debaters. Here to represent libraries, we have Queen of the Quiet Zone, Dame of the Dewey Decimal System, a lady of learning, and host of the podcast Forever Ago, Joy Dolo. Here I am with my quietest yelling sounds. <laughs> Joy, in one sentence, why are libraries cooler than museums? Um, in one sentence, I have so many things to say, but I'll try to put it into one sentence. <laughs> libraries are basically the center of entertainment as we know it today. Whoa. I'll back it up. <laughs> I'll back it all up. And here to represent museums, we have captain of creativity, ombre of history, master of monuments, and brains on producer, Mark Sanchez. Listeners, you can't see this, but I am giving Ben my biggest, saddest puppy dog eyes <laughs> for Team Museum. What's up? <laughs> and Mark, one sentence. Why are museums the smash boom best? I'm going to start it off with one word, experience. (gasps) Museums, you get to experience whatever is being shown to you, the artwork, the pictures, even if they're inappropriate. You get to feel that, I suppose. (laughs) Um, Mark, you're being a little loud for me right now over in library world, so if you could just bring it down a couple decibels, thanks. No problem. I'll have fun over at the museum. (laughs) (laughs) Silence is fun. Quiet is fun. (laughs) All right, so before we get started, let's review the rules of the game. Round one is the Declaration of Greatness. Team Library and Team Museum will each have a chance to wow us with the history, science, and lore specific to their sides. Next, we've got the Micro Round, a creative challenge each team has prepared for so they can showcase their side in an unexpected way. Round three is the sneak attack. In this round, debaters are surprised with a unique, imaginative challenge where they have to invent a response on the spot. And then we have the final six, our last super short round where our debaters have a final chance to sway the judges with just six words. All right, debaters, are you ready to go? I was born ready. Oh, yeah. Right this way. Step up to the exhibits. And Ben, how about you? Are you all set for this smash boom battle to begin? Yep. Excellent. Now put on your thinking caps because it's time for the first round of this clash of collections. Declaration of Greatness. 
We flipped a coin, and Joy is up first. All right, Joy, let's get lost in the stacks. Take us on a tour of those edifices of education we call libraries. (sighs) Sorry, I'm a little out of breath. I was running from King Henry VIII. Or wait, no, that was last week. I was harpooning a great white whale. Oh, wait, no, that's not it. Oh, I remember. I was fighting Lord Voldemort today. Same time tomorrow? You bet your Dewey Decimals. In fact, I can fight Lord Voldemort whenever I want. And you can too if you're a part of the library squad. What are you saying? Look it up, Voldemort! Libraries are important because they provide easy access to information. Libraries and museums have a little in common in that regard, but a library has way more options for reading, fun, and information than any old stinky museum. Stinky? That's not necessary. It boils down to this. Libraries are effortless. You walk in, a librarian leads you to a book, you start learning. Not as complicated as going to a museum and listening to earbuds on a tour. Boring. (sighs) And your good old public library has a whole lot going on besides books. You can hold meetings, have events, surf the internet. I even saw an entire play in a, you guessed it, a library. There are an estimated 116,867 libraries in the United States. That's more libraries than there are people in the entire city of Green Bay, Wisconsin. Go Packers! I'm more of a Steelers fan. Let's get technicalities out of the way. What is a library? It's usually a building or room that holds collections for people to borrow or refer to. They can contain books, movies, photos, articles, animals. Wait, no, that's a zoo. I want you to take out your phone. How many pics you got in there? Probably a bunch. I bet you have a big collection of memories that you can sift through. Well, congratulations, you've got yourself a photo library. In your pocket, a pocket library. I don't have pockets. Voldemort, are you still here? I am the Dark Lord. I am everywhere. Just like libraries. Libraries are the institution when searching for knowledge, but it hasn't always been this easy. To understand why libraries are so revolutionary, it helps to know a little history. Libraries have been around as long as record keeping, which was forever ago. There is evidence from the third millennium BC that shows clay tablets being used as a collection of records. Have you finished with the How to Make a Fire for Dummies tablet yet? Oh, yes. I have since moved on to the How to Hunt for Neanderthals tablet. Oh, I love that issue. As the world developed more, reading became a sacred activity for the people with an education and money. Wealthy people had personal libraries to keep information close. Monasteries, which is where monks live under religious vows, had lavish collections of books and scriptures for perusal. They copied the tablets by hand to maintain them, and they loaned out copies to other monasteries. Doesn't that sound familiar? Overseas in England during the Middle Ages, a time with brave knights riding horses, castles, and King Arthur, they were still far from borrowing. Books were chained to bookcases to ensure there was no theft, which is what I do with my most prized possessions, too. There, there, Dr. Purr. I love you so much. In the United States, things were developing fast. I'm talking about European settlers coming in the 15th century. Jamestown founded in 1607, and oh yeah, the Revolutionary War in 1776, hashtag NBD. The settlers also brought churches with them, and churches had libraries, but they still weren't at the point of lending out books to the masses. Rumor has it that the first public library was erected in Boston in the early 1700s. Slowly, other people were following suit. Even Benjamin Franklin donated and made his own members-only small library in Philadelphia. There may have been a handful of other libraries over the course of the 17th and 18th century, but for some reason, libraries were still relatively rare. Then came the women's clubs. Trap mix. In the late 1880s and early 1900s, women's clubs were popping up across the country. They were all about education, justice in the legal system, protecting the environment, and creating libraries. They already had collections of books and believed education was for everyone. 
Along with the American Library Association, we have them to thank for nearly 80% of the public libraries in North America. We did it! We did it! Shh! We did it! Today, libraries are open to everyone, everywhere. You can borrow most items and bring them back at a reasonable time. You probably don't want to try borrowing a Picasso painting from a museum. Libraries are vital because they provide a way to connect. My favorite memories in a library include reading all of the Little House on the Prairie series, listening to all of NSYNC's first album while dreaming about how Joey Fatone and I would one day be married on a farm with several children, rambunctiously playing in the backyard as the sun sets, and oops, there goes my imagination again. It must be from all that reading at the library. It's gonna be May. Sorry. I'm a huge NSYNC fan. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh man. <laughs> a very compelling case for libraries. I would listen to the trap mix of that whole Declaration of Greatness. <laughs> there was singing. There was beatboxing. There was a lot of overstated library facts. <gasps> what? <laughs> Well, Ben, what stood out to you about Joy's Declaration of Greatness? Um, that only wealthy people had personal libraries and that there are um, more libraries than the people in the city of Green Bay, Wisconsin. And that there are just so many libraries. They're everywhere. They're everywhere. And, you know, you were saying you even have one in your school. So you have them in the schools. You have them in churches. You have the ones that are just for public perusal. They're everywhere. There's probably a lot more than museums. I'm pretty sure there are. And plus museums aren't in your school. (laughs) (laughs) That's the truth. Well, Mark, before this goes much further, we're going to give you a chance to rebut Joy's argument. You've got 30 seconds. (laughs) You've got 30 seconds to respond to Joy's ode to libraries. No whispering required. And your time starts now. Ben, I think museums are in schools because if you think about it, a library is a collection. You said it yourself, Joy. A library is a collection. What is a museum? It's a collection. All libraries are there for museums. Come on. You've got a library of books. It's beautiful. Photo library, Joy? A photo library in your pocket? No, that's not a photo library. That is a museum collection of artwork in your pocket. Right on your phone. You've got all those pictures. Little House in the Prairie Museum. You want to go there? I bet you do. And time. Okay, libraries and museums are the same thing. That's like potato, potato, only one is spelled wrong. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, this is getting feisty. Okay. I don't know if we're going to be friends after this. (laughs) These are so deep. All right, well, now it's time for Mark's Declaration of Greatness. Mark, show us what those dwellings of discovery known as museums are all about. There's something about a group of objects that fascinates us. One rock, big deal. Ten rocks? Okay, I'm listening. One hundred rocks chosen specifically for their features, shape, and relationship to each other? Yes, please. When can I see them? Because when things are in a carefully selected collection, it makes you think. But why these rocks? Look at those shapes. Look at them as a whole. Oh, yeah. I could see building a house in that shape. You know what? I think these rocks might be related to another collection I've seen. When I say museum, you might think of the Mona Lisa or a woolly mammoth diorama or the starscape dome of a planetarium. Art, history, and science are the bread and butter of museum culture. But did you know there's a museum of video games? And one for roller skating? And bananas? There's one for comic books? Look, up in the sky! And one for spies. There's even a museum for dummies. Vent Haven is the world's only museum dedicated to the art of ventriloquism. Lisa Sweezy runs the Vent Haven Museum in Fort Mitchell, Kentucky. And she's no dummy. She knows books in libraries can't compete with seeing something in person. There is something very personal about being with the objects versus any other format that attempts to capture them. It is the physical presence that is the experience. Museums open to the public began to take shape in the 17th century. This is around the same time the first coffee shops were being introduced in England. In that time, it was common for someone to have a personal collection of stuff called a cabinet of curiosity. 
These cabinets were actually rooms in rich people's homes, and they were filled with all sorts of rare, fantastical items. Ah. But you had to get an invite to see them. One of the first museums open to the public began like this. It was the collection of a British father-son duo, both named John Tredescant. Author Marjorie Swan tells their tale in her book, Curiosities and Texts. John Tredescant, the elder, was a phenomenal gardener. And that's how he made his living, by working his wonder with plants for members of the elite. I've been lucky enough to travel as far east as Russia on behalf of my employers. As a gardener, he had an eye for rare plants. He was gathering plants for his employers, but he was also gathering plants for himself. He put some of these in his cabinet of curiosity, which he called the Ark. The Ark is much more than plants. I have the ribs of a whale, a seahorse, and something called a banana. It's a fruit. (laughs) Uh, Have you met my son? How do you do? John Tredescant the Younger. I added to the Ark by traveling west to the Americas. The Tredescants were more than happy to show off their collection. But they didn't limit viewings to the elite. For a modest fee, anyone could see it. They were so proud of their collection and wanted it preserved for years to come. It's time for me to bid this earth farewell. (sighs) Goodbye, my son. How can I make father's dying wish come true? Enter Elias Ashmole. A lawyer by trade, but also a guy who was very interested in climbing the social ladder. I would be happy to help write down all the items you have here. I would love to get my hands on uh, uh, a catalog the Ark. We could even publish it as a book. Well then, let's get to cataloging. Apparently, Ashmole paid the publication costs of this book. And so as far as Ashmole was concerned, if he'd paid to publish the catalog, well, that was as good as owning the stuff, wasn't it? When John the Younger dies, (coughs) Long live the Ark. Ashmole's secret plan really kicks into high gear. With both Johns gone, it's going to be tough to keep this Ark thing going if it stays in the Tredescant house. I'll reach out to some acquaintances at Oxford University. Maybe they're interested. The Tredescant Ark, he gads, we would love to have it. We'll even construct a new building to house it. Fantastic! There's just one thing. When it moves, how's about we call it... I don't know. The Ashmolean Museum? I did, after all, pay to publish said catalogue. It only seems fair, right? Um, well, I suppose. And the Ashmolean Museum is still open to the public today. Whether you step into a room filled with rare plants, or dinosaur bones, or even ventriloquist dummies, museums are the guardians of our most precious items. Thanks to them, we can bathe ourselves in the presence of great works. Is it too much to call museums the unsung heroes of Earth? I'd take it one step further. Museums, heroes of the universe. (laughs) Oh my. Right? Yeah. (laughs) Complete heroes. That was very fascinating and very grand. Ben, what did you think of Mark's Declaration of Greatness? What in there stood out to you? Um, I like the very funny voices, <laughs> and um, I didn't know that there was a museum for dummies. <laughs> right? There's a museum dedicated to spam up the road. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. in town. Yeah. I mean, what? Don't go. <laughs> <laughs> Mark, you and your trickery. <laughs> <laughs> I learned from Elias Ashmole. <laughs> okay, Joy, you have got 30 seconds to respond to Mark and your time starts 
now. Okay, Mark, you said heroes of the universe. Actually, the only hero is Captain Planet. Um, precious <laughs> items you can go see in a museum. Yeah, you can see precious items in a museum if you like, and they're precious, and they cost money, and libraries are free. Um, also, I can do a fun accent. Hoi to toy to toy. Um, <laughs> welcome today. I've also got some things to say about museums. Oh, I should win because I sound so fun when I say it. Um, also, our author Marjorie Swan. Why don't you go get her book at a library where most and of her things are? Time. All right, Ben, you've listened to both sides very closely. It got heated. There was music. What are your thoughts? Who is more persuasive? You're going to award a point, but don't tell us out loud. Do it for the dinosaur bow. Um, um, <laughs> cheating. I, I declare cheating. No bribing. <laughs> <laughs> ben, did you award a point? Yes, I have. Excellent work, Ben. Listeners, have you awarded a point if you need a little more time to think about it or discuss it with your sister, uncle, guardian, teacher, or friend before you make up your mind? Just press pause. And we'll be back in a moment with more Smash Boom Best. You're watching State of Debate, home to rage and rhetoric and awe-inspiring argumentation. Todd Douglas here with five-time debate champ Taylor Lincoln. Today we're covering a debate that's creating a big buzz, despite the debater's small stature. Right you are, Taylor. In fact, our team had to break out some special equipment just to capture this one. Yeah, let's go to the live feed from a playground in Spokane, Washington, where two ants are debating the best place to get a snack. Lunch boxes or trash cans? Trash cans are gross. Lunch boxes are treasure troves of sumptuous, pristine snacks. Lunchbox food is hard to get at. In trash cans, everything is easy access. Every wrapper is broken, every drink spilled. Well, Abby and Alice and Angus and Albert and Ariana and Arwen and Adam are all headed for the lunchboxes, which means it must be the best place to get a snack. Oh boy, did you just catch that, Taylor? For a little guy, he sure dropped a big logical fallacy on us. Sure did, Todd. Logical fallacies are sloppy shortcuts people use to support their opinions, but they actually make an argument weaker. Indeed, Taylor. There are many types of logical fallacies. The one you just heard is called a bandwagon fallacy. It's when you use popular opinion to support your side instead of logical arguments. Oh, how right you are. Let's hear the replay. Well, Abby and Alice and Angus and Albert and Ariana and Arwen and Adam are all headed for the lunchboxes, which means it must be the best place to get a snack. Ooh, this is a tough one to watch, Todd. The ant tried to make the case that lunchboxes are the best because they're popular, but those things aren't always related. A blatant bandwagon fallacy. Mm. I mean, just because something is popular doesn't mean it's better. Maybe lunchboxes are popular because none of the ants have tried trash cans yet. Exactly. Let's go back to the live feed to see how this plays out for our small friends. Trash cans have so many more options than lunchboxes. They've got everything from last night's half-eaten burrito to this morning's mangled muffin. But everyone finds their snacks in the lunchboxes. Come on, Alexander. Just because something is popular doesn't mean it's good. Do you smell that day-old carnitas? Oh, man. Just this once. But I got dibs on the burrito. Holy mackerel, Taylor. That settles it. Woo, it really does, Todd. That's a lesson all your debate heads out there, rookies and veterans alike. Bandwagon fallacies are no way to form an argument. And if you... Todd, we talked about this. I'm in charge of the buzzer. What? Just no, get, just get it. Sorry, it so, sorry, it sorry. I, I got carried away. So, <clears throat> keep those arguments clean and chock full of facts. And we'll catch you next time on State, State of Debate. Debate. Best. Boom. Smash. Smash. Boom. Best. This is Smash Boom Best, the show about showdowns. We get amazing debate ideas from our listeners all the time, like this one from Paige and Reagan in San Clemente, California. Our debate idea is Thomas Edison versus Henry Ford. We'll give them a call at the end of the show to see who they think should win. All right, let's get back to our Smash Boom battle of the day, libraries versus museums. These buildings of books and palaces of placards are really bringing it. So open your ears because it's time for our creative challenge. 
more. Micro Round. This week's Micro Round challenge is Alien Encounter. Each contestant has been instructed to pretend they're an alien who's been sent to Earth to collect data on libraries and museums for the very first time. Neither of them have seen a library or a museum before, so they're feeling very curious about these places and what all the Earthlings are doing in them. Joy went first in the last round, so Mark, you're up first. Let's hear your field report on museums. Agent Amalama, good to have you back on Planet Snarf. Good to be back, Commander. Glad I didn't miss the spring volcano blooms. Ah, yes. You're just in time for that spectacular snarfy and lava filling the night sky. Ah. Now, to the business at hand, your museum mission. Museums, right. In a word, Commander, fascinating. Apparently... There are different classifications of museums on Earth. Some are houses for pictures and sculptures. Others showcase Earthling discovery. My pod landed near something called the Museum of Natural History. What did you find? That was where I saw the inner housing of a most ferocious creature. They call it a dinosaur. Sounds like a code plaid. Should I alert Prime Minister Fartzalot? I think we're safe for now. The housing is something called a skeleton, so this creature is no longer alive. Well, okay. As long as you're sure. Apparently, there are different types of dinosaurs. This one is called Tyrannosaurus Rex. Interesting. Yes. It stood about as tall as a red-bellied rat smell. But where the rat smell has cotton candy, This Tyrannosaurus Rex had huge, sharp teeth. (gasps) And strangely tiny arms, come to think of it. Anywho, the human inhabitants of Earth were very engrossed with this skeleton. Were you able to ascertain why? According to documents at the museum, there was a time on Earth when these creatures were alive. It seems as if the human Earthlings learn about their planet by studying dinosaur skeletons. This museum artifact gives them a connection to history. It helps them understand how Earth continues to evolve. You mean they haven't stopped evolving? No, Commander. It's still an evolving planet. Thank you for this thorough and delightful report, Agent. Amalama, I wouldn't be surprised if this information gets you that promotion to Senior Snarf Agent. (gasps) Was there anything else? Well, Commander, I would be remiss if I didn't report back on the library mission. You mean the Agent Dilophonus mission? Yes. I happened to see Agent Dilophonus in the library. It looked as if the building itself had put the agent to sleep. Almost as if the library was so boring, there was nothing else to do. I fear an extraction team may be necessary. Thank you again, Agent Amalama. We shall spare no expense to save Dilophonus. All hands on deck! All hands on deck! Boredom extraction code red! Snarf Team 8, to your position! This is not a drill. I repeat, this is not a drill. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, Mark, you got in facts about museums and disses and a promotion? I don't know what you're talking about. Ooh, wow. Very impressive. All right, let's see what Team Library has got hiding in her carols of knowledge. Joy, take it away. Earth Year 2019. Observation subject, libraries. I have seen nothing like this place before. As I enter, a human says, Welcome. I dismiss them. To my right is a herd of small humans clapping while another much older human sings A, B, C, D, E, F, G to them. What could this mean? An algorithm? Are these coordinates back to my home planet? Have I been discovered? I dash further. I see many, oh, what is the word? Teenagers surrounding the boxed screens of information. Ah, yes, I have studied those. You type in your inquiry to be a part of the Google, and you are Googled an answer. 
Very similar to my planet, except the word Google means ice cream sandwich. Strange. And I am hungry. One of the teen humans glares at me, and I stumble further into the most miraculous thing. Pages and pages of information, packed into a leather-bound contraption and placed into many rows and even cabinets. As I approach, I wonder, how am I to know which little paper box to grab? Am I allowed to touch? What if it bites back? I feel a human behind me. Is it the herd of small humans? The teenager? Am I done for? I turn. It says, can I help you find something? It's welcome, human, again. What a relief. They are offering assistance. What is this? My eyes are leaking. This cannot be. I am crying. Or as my people say, Fuldorfengel. The human leads me to an aisle about planets and shows me a book about space, including my home, Mars. I must be in the comedy section because these facts are not right. <laughs> Still, with all this information and entertainment in one place, it is a wonder humans don't live here. (laughs) (laughs) I think I'm the funniest person. (laughs) (laughs) I am, wait, what was your word for crying? Fuldorfengel. I am Fuldorfengel with joy. (laughs) How do you spell that? (laughs) Spell like it sounds. (laughs) Far... Dingle. M-U-Z-E-U-M. Oh, There's a period in the middle. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> oh, wow. Ben, you have a tough decision ahead of you. You have to decide who was more persuasive in their alien encounter micro round. Take a moment to think about it. Listeners, you too, take a moment to decide who you think won. Ben, did you award a point? Yes. Was that easy decision or a hard decision? Um, a s- kind of an easy decision. Oh. Yeah. Oh, I, I mean, of course. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Now it's time for our <laughs> sneak attack. The sneak attack is a surprise every single episode, so Joy and Mark have no idea what it's going to be. Are you ready for your surprising assignment? Oh, man. <laughs> yes. I oh, suppose. Yeah. <laughs> Awesome. Your super secret round is Twinkle Twinkle I'm a Star. We need you to write a song about your side set to the tune of Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. For example, if I were to write a song about pickles, it might go Pickles, pickles in a jar. Kosher is the best by far. Make sense? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Great. We will listen to some hold music while you work out your lyrics. Quiet. Shh. Crack a book. Library time. Let's find a nook. Do the Dewey Decimal. Classify a book for me. Museums filled with art. Bones and maps. And hey, that's a cool chart. Great halls filled with facts and history. Okay, Mark and Joy, are you ready? Yes. Twinklingly. Do we, <laughs> do we sing them at the same time? <laughs> <laughs> What's your chorus? In rounds. In rounds, yeah, we should. <laughs> oh, man. All right, Joy, you are up first. Oh, goodness. Let's hear it. Libraries are the best in town. If you're there, you'll see a clown. Books <laughs> and music events too you'll need a few days before you're through this is my library jingle hope it makes you full derfingle (laughs) oh man oh man mark it's a tough act to follow but you could do it i think i can ahem Statues, pics, and paintings, please. Museums for you and me. See Van Gogh's Starry Night. Spaceships, aeroplanes of flight. Museums for you and me. Way better than libraries. Oh! Oh! Did you 
notice that I threw no shade? I was like the bigger person <laughs> in the song. I just want to throw that out there. This is called a debate. <laughs> also, can we do it again? And can I use my Beyonce voice? <laughs> Absolutely. I call no fair for using Beyonce voice. <laughs> also very impressive. Okay, Ben, you have another tough decision. Who won that round? Listeners at home, you too award a point for who you think won that very musical round. I did it. All right, we are almost at the end of this doozy of a debate, but we have not awarded our final point yet. We still have our last round. The final six. All right, we've heard them sing, we've heard them beatbox, but now they are going to present their final six words in the hopes of winning that last critical point. Mark, you're up first. All right, here we go. Museums, now and forever. Libraries, meh. (laughs) Oh! (laughs) Joy, let's hear your final six. Books, movies, music, free. Museums, inappropriate. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, my. (laughs) (laughs) This debate. Oh, this is the best day of my life. (laughs) (laughs) This debate is a doozy. Ben, I, I don't envy you your position. But it's time to award that last point to whoever you think earned it. He's thinking. It's a tough one. Go with your gut, Ben. Good game. Go with your gut. Good match. Yeah. You did well. We'll see what happens. All right. Ben, have you awarded the final point? Yes, I have. Who is the winner? It is a tie. (laughs) No! No! Don't say it, Molly. Don't say it. It's a tie, but it all comes down to this. Sudden death. Sudden death tiebreaker. Oh, man. Remix! It can't be worse than, like, writing another song. All right. Are you all ready for your sudden death? I'm ready. Yes, I am ready. Okay, your sudden death challenge is... Superhero. If your side was a superhero, what would your name and superpower be? We'll give you a second to think about it. And let's be quiet for joy. I'll be quiet. <laughs> but some parts of the library are loud too. I just want to clarify. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's flip a coin to see who goes first. Uh, heads will be Mark, tails will be Joy. Heads. Heads. All right. Hey, Mark, you are up first. Uh, I have to stand up for my superhero because I'm going to come in. I'm going to make an entrance because I know I know young Ben here. He is dreaming of all the things he could be doing, uh, looking at dinosaur bones or inappropriate art or <laughs> objection going to the a video game museum. And Ben is at home. Who's going to help him do that? Ah, Experiando! <laughs> <laughs> Patron. Superhero to museums. I am Experiando, and I help you experience things. <laughs> I help you experience dinosaurs. <laughs> I bring you into paintings. I let you see the statues. <laughs> All right, so we've got Experiando. Joy, who is your superhero creation? Um, Mine is Lena Literacy. <laughs> <laughs> Lena Literacy Razor, and her superpower is finding exactly what you need in a library, whether it be reading or music or reference materials. I can say it louder than you. She, she will help you through the library to find whatever facts and opinions and articles that you need. First you read about them, then you experience them. But reading is also considered a type of experience, she said. (laughs) And now Joey's speaking in the third person. (laughs) I am her. You know, there's a little bit of her inside of all of us. Oh, so in a way, you are your own superhero, and that's how I end with a good message. All right, we have Experiando and Lena Literacy Razor. <laughs> Lena Literacy 
Library Razor. <laughs> Lena, Literacy Library Razor. <laughs> yes. <laughs> ben, it all comes down to this. Who swayed you in that final round? Can it be a tie? <laughs> <laughs> no, Ben. No, I can't. <laughs> Okay, drum roll, please. Ben, who is the winner? The winner of this debate is Joy. Oh. We are the champions, <laughs> my friends. <laughs> Bohemian Rhapsody, we'll keep on fighting. <laughs> to the, I'll do the whole song if nobody stops me. Wow. <laughs> oh, my gosh. So, so, Ben, that was a really close debate. It was a tie. So what settled it for you in the final round? I like Joey's name better. <laughs> <laughs> ben likes syllables. Yeah. <laughs> Note to self. (laughs) You know, I just wanted to say that I think that you fought honorably and that, you know, even though you didn't use your library voice all the time, I understand. And, you know, I like your shirt. It's nice. It's a nice shirt. (laughs) Your dress is amazing. Thank you. (laughs) And I think the place I like to go into sometimes museums is the library. So, you know, museum, library, friends, friends. That's it for this big-time debate battle. Smash Boom Best is a creation of the people at Brains On and American Public Media. It's produced by Mark Sanchez, Sandin Totten, Molly Bloom, Elissa Dudley, and Rosie DuPont. We had engineering help today from Corey Shreppel. And we had production help from Lauren D., Manica Wilhelm, and Christina Lopez. We want to give a special thanks to Justin Koo, Eric Ringham, John Miller, Peter Eklund, Nikki Pedersen, Max Nesterak, and Sam Chu. Mark, is there anyone you want to thank today? Yeah, I want to shout out to Lisa Sweezy and Marjorie Swan for helping me discover much more about museums. And what about you, Joy? Anyone you want to thank? Um, I want to thank all of the librarians that I've hung out with throughout my life. I have a short list. Just kidding. But like (laughs) through middle school and high school and college and even at the Hennepin County Library and other libraries in town. Thank you for what you do. And how about you, Ben? Do you have any special shout outs? Yes, I do. I would like to thank Rosie DuPont, uh, Lisa Dudley, both you, Joy, and Mark for being such good debaters. Um, and you, Molly, for being such a good, um, <laughs> sidekick. Dancer. Oh, sidekick. you. I am your sidekick. I want to thank you for being such a good dancer. Um, I would also like to thank my dad for driving me here. Excellent. And before we go, let's call up Paige and Reagan. They're the listeners who suggested the Thomas Edison versus Henry Ford debate. I think Thomas Edison would win because he invented the light bulb. I think Henry Ford would win because he invented the assembly line to make cars. That's it for this episode of Smash Boom Best. We'll be back soon with another debate battle. Ciao! Bye! Bye. Hi-hats. Boom, 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 boom